This is an all-electric 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQB 350 4Matic in polar white. And here's a few things that you're going to want to know right off the bat. 288 horsepower, 384 pound-feet of torque, 4Matic all-wheel drive system, 100 kilowatt DC fast charging system, and adjustable regenerative braking with dynamic select control. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, dual-zone automatic climate control with heated and cooled seats. It has the mirror package. I guess that means it comes with mirrors. It has 60-40 rear split seats, and the EQB also does have an option to get up to seven seats similar to that of the Tesla Model Y. It has a 64-color ambient lighting system and two 10.25-inch digital displays. This specific model has the 19-inch AMG five-spoke wheels, which I'm not a fan of. It has the AMG line steering wheel, has adaptable suspension with adjustable damping, speed limit assist, and the AMG night package. All of the options on this specific model add up to $71,120. Let's start with a look at the exterior, then the interior, and then we'll go for a drive. Also, this video is sponsored by Into the AM. So that's these t-shirts that I wear. I got the deep V going on today, folks but they have a sale coming up on their basic t-shirts, which is what I wear all the time. They're extremely soft. They fit really nicely. They have the, they got the V if you want it. The V if you want it. I really like their stuff. So using code Jeeves, that will save you 10% off of your order. Plus any other sales that they have going on, sometimes it's 40, 50% off. You're able to use my code and stack it on top of that. So they have a bunch of sales going on with the basic tees. I highly recommend them. And I always say like, you're gonna buy t-shirts at some point. Why not try into the AM? They're extremely soft. I think you'll see what I mean. You really enjoy them. So use code Jeeves, save you an extra 10% on your order. And into the AM, thank you for sponsoring this video and being a partner on the channel. So starting around the front of the car here, to know this is an EQB compared to a GLB, which they're on the same chassis. In fact, even some of the engine mounts are still in the bay, even though there's no engine up here. This is all closed off because there's not any radiator or any oil cooling that needs to happen like in a gas powered car. So this is cooled off and this is also the sportier looking AMG line front end. Some of the other ones actually have some blue lines like you can see right here in the headlights. And overall, I think the black trim and the night package gives it a nice look. You have the black mirror caps here, the roof rails, and then the panoramic roof, which makes it nice, especially in white. Now, coming down to the wheels, I'm not a huge fan of these wheels. These are the 19-inch AMG Sport wheels, and they're kind of designed like the F1 wheels that Lewis Hamilton rips around the world in. So. I'm not a huge fan. I'm sure there are some aerodynamic features to these, which is why they're designed like they are. But again, just for a sport wheel, AMG makes some really nice wheels. I feel like they could have done better, but because it's an electric car, maybe this adds some range with that design. You also have this EQB insignia right here. I think that's a nice look to the car. It's not trying to be a fake vent or anything like that. It's just a nice little highlight for you. Around the side here, you do have this plastic trim along with some gloss black trim that runs along there. Again, I think it looks okay. I feel like for the AMG line, it should be maybe a flared fender or an aerodynamics package that looks a little more aggressive, but we'll let it go. Now to open up the charge port here, you just simply press in and then it pops out. And then you have the CCS connector. You just press these two tabs in and it opens all of that up. Now, moving around to the back of the car, you can actually see there's a little lip spoiler mounted on the back here. And then the Mercedes symbol here is open, kind of like a VW. When you put it in reverse, this pops open. And then there's the camera. And I also just, I didn't know that if you press that in that the trunk opens up. I had no idea that was gonna happen. And then we go into the trunk space here. I think it's 61 cubic feet of uh, space in here. These fold down 40, 40, 20. 40 and 40 is 80, 20 plus 80 is 100. That means 100% of the seats will fold all the way down. And the, and the EQBs do come with a seven seat option as well. So you can configure this in a seven seat option. It does also come with a home charger. You can see that here, kind of the 112. That's that's what it looks like. It's a nice nice charger, nice thin cable, kind of similar to the Tesla one. Some of these manufacturers' chargers are really bulky. That's not the case. This is very lightweight, so I really like the charger that the car comes with and the fact that they don't like charge you for having every electric car should just automatically come with your charging cable. As far as storage in the EQB, not great 
compared to a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. There's really no space under here to store. And if we move around to the front of the car, you'll notice that there is stuff everywhere in here. In fact, like I said earlier, there's some of these engine mounts from like the gas powered version GLB. So there's a lot going on in here. And as time goes on and as Mercedes gets better at making electric vehicles, this will all be condensed and probably moved to a different portion of the car. But uh, yeah, just a lot going on up here and other EVs, there's storage like Tesla and VW. I think even the Mustang Mach-E has a nice storage. So I would say Mercedes is a little behind in this area. Now that we covered the exterior of the car, let's hop to the interior. Uh, these are AMG sports seats, so uh, they're, they're very comfortable and they're adjustable with lumbar support. They're heated and cooled, which is very nice. To start the car, this does have a start-stop button, so as long as the key is on you, you can start it up, and then you can kind of configure everything to how you want it. These air conditioning blades are really nice, how they're designed. I think it's a clean looking design and futuristic. And then this display here, I like that Mercedes just stuck to what they're doing in their other cars, which is a really clean looking 10 and a half inch display. I think that looks really nice. And I also like this little track pad in the middle here. I really liked on my BMW, there was a knob, but having this to kind of move around while you're driving is much easier than trying to like hit this on the touch screen. And this is also a touch screen. So if you wanna use that as well, you can, but you have this option down here and you also have an option on your steering wheel to kind of scroll through everything. So you have three separate options of ways to control this screen. And then with the left hand, you can control this screen that's directly in front of you and kind of flip through the different displays, check your charging speed, check your efficiency. There's various things you can control. Now, for me coming into this car, it's slightly confusing and it's certainly a learning curve. But again, as an owner of the car, I try not to say, oh, this is really confusing because as you own a car, you're just gonna get used to it over time. There's also the glove box here, just opens up a nice place to kind of store your phone up here and then your insurance information and everything down there for when you get pulled over because the zero to 60 time on this thing is approximately six seconds. So not crazy fast, but it also has some pep, especially when you put it into sport mode. It's nice that it has sport mode and adaptive suspension and steering. So it does have all of those features on it because it's an upgraded model. It's also $70,000 for this specific model. I recommend going on Mercedes site and you can see kind of how they configured it to get to that. This has a 70.5 kilowatt hour battery. Some of them are all wheel drive, some of them are not. And there's a whole bunch of features that you can configure on the Mercedes. So. Now that we've kind of covered the interior, let's look at the uh, rear part of the car as far as seating. So I'm six feet tall. This is my seating position for the front of the car. Let's see how much room I have in the back. In the rear part of the car here, they've actually carved out the back of these seats. So I have ample leg room and I also have room under the seat here to fit my feet. So that's nice. And the floor in the back, also only has a very small gear tunnel there. Again, I think this is here because it's based off of a gas powered car's chassis. That's my assumption. The rear seating position though is weird. They're fairly stiff, but moreover, you sit up really high. I feel like I'm sitting really high and it reminds me of what it felt like sitting in the back of an EQS sedan. It wasn't a very comfortable position. This is decent and you are able to adjust the angle of the seat. So you can see this little pool here that lets you do that and then adjust it. That's as far back as it will lean. So you have that pool on all three of the seats back here. Yeah, it's just, it's a little firm and you're awkwardly sitting way above, you're like looking down into the front portion of the car. And there, maybe that's because there's a, there's batteries back here or the rear drive unit is possibly back here, but that's just something I'm noticing. Let's see if we can lift up. Oh, these seats do slide as well. Yeah, this seat actually slides up as you can see there. So by extending the seats, it gives you a little bit more room if you're uh, moving boxes or something like that. That is a, a useful feature if you really need to maximize the storage space here. It's also probably the same in the seven seat model. That way, if you have people sitting be behind you, you can move those seats up and give them some leg room. Also a big thank you to Mercedes-Benz of Gilbert who has an incredible inventory right now with these EQBs. 
Also for the EQEs and EQSs, they have $7,500 off baked in. And if you're a Tesla owner wanting to trade your Tesla, they'll give you an additional $1,500 off. So if you're looking to lease one of these cars or one of their EQEs or EQSs, you can get them for under $900 a month on a lease for an incredible vehicle. Again, thank you to Mercedes-Benz of Gilbert. All right, so we just got to this Electrify America charger, America's most reliable network. This machine is totally off. This machine is totally off. There's a Tycon stuck there. Uh, it is charging though. And then the ID4 also does not work. So um, yeah, it's a total mess because we're just trying to charge this up. But again, coming here and not being, it'd be like going to a gas station. You don't know if it's going to work. So yeah, this, this isn't good. Let's go see if this other one's working. Okay, it says plug in. Looks like it's working, right? All right, we're backed in. Also, another thing that's annoying about this site is everything's angled. And this is a one way road here. So like what I just had to do to go out and back this in, like if you weren't comfortable with that, again, another issue with how these chargers are set up. <sighs> All right, initiating charging. You just see here, it just says, please plug in. I already did plug in, there's a loading bar. Okay, so this is a 150 kilowatt charger. I think this car can only get up to 100 kilowatt charging speed. So we're at 75, let's see if it goes and maxes out. The battery is so low that we should get max speed here. And then to get this charged all the way to 100%, looks like it would take 49 minutes, showing 91 kilowatts. So close to the peak charging speed uh, that's advertised. But again, like the issue is the, there's four chargers here, one of them works. Those screens aren't even on, and this one over here, the screen's on, but it will never connect. So it's like the, these third-party networks are so bad. That's why Tesla opening up the Magic Dock and giving these cars access to the Tesla charging network will help people adopt EVs more because it's a more reliable network. Uh, these ones are a joke, in my opinion. Yeah, 94 kilowatts, what we're charging at. The battery's already up to 13%. We're gonna charge here for a little bit and then we're gonna be able to drive it around, do the full review of the car. But just some features while we're sitting here that are really nice. Heated and cooled seats on you know the Model Y, Model 3, they do not have cooled seats. So really nice to have that option, especially in hot climates. Door panel here, all pretty similar to everything else. Being able to open up the hatch. Again, stuff like this, like these buttons, on the Tesla, it's all done on the screen and within software. And then just your standard buttons here for the windows, unlock, lock, and then your seats in Mercedes are always controlled from up here, which is something to get used to. I kept reaching down on the side of the seat, but that's only for lumbar support and everything like that. So that's all good. Now, the steering wheel here, this is a sports steering wheel and to adjust the regenerative braking, you just tap these paddles here to make it higher or lower. And the car, the setting it's in right now, it does not come to a stop. So like a gas powered car, it will creep forward, but I'm sure there's a setting in here to where you can change that. But overall, the car is very well put together. This little pad here is a mouse. You can kind of move around the center display and it has haptic feedback on it, which is nice. You can hit home, takes you back to home, and you're able to move around the media center here. So if we go up to this display here, consumption, energy flow, it's charging. We're already at 15% and it just has a graphic showing it's charging the battery. Yeah, so not too much information here, just a graphic showing you that, hey, the car is, is actually charging. Showing the charging speed to me is much more useful. It also has a start stop button. I don't know why they have that. I f it would be nice if you could just get in and once you hit the brake, that just gets it going. Tesla does that, VW does that. I'm sure there's others, but I, I don't really see the point of a start stop button. Not that big of a deal, but just something that I think for electric cars can be skipped over. It's funny when I hit the start button, I can almost feel the car go boom. <laughs> like it started up. There's also this button right down here that says dynamic, and that changes the different drive modes that you're in from sport, individual, comfort, eco, all of that stuff. So you're able to change the drive mode, but again, that has to be done when we're not sitting here charging. Now, one trick here that I just learned when you're disconnecting your charger, hit this button first here, showing the electrical plug, and then there's a little light here that shows the unlocked button. You'll kind of hear it unlock, and then you can pull the charger out. It took me a minute to learn that because it's delayed a little bit, but just something to note. And then you just press these to cover them up, to open them, press these buttons right here, and they open back up. So that's how that all works. All right, so driving the EQB. 
very nice. The steering is very light and luxurious feeling. There's also two settings for the steering. There's normal and sport, so you can adjust that. You can also adjust the throttle response, the suspension, all of that. So it's really nice to have all that. The car is very quiet in here. You feel like you're in your own private space. Being able to block out the sun coming through the ceiling. I know it sounds crazy, but especially in Phoenix, it gets so hot through that glass roof that not having something, I do have an aftermarket part, the sunshade that I'll have linked in the description that I do use, which is nice. But again, it's an aftermarket part. It'd be nice if it just came like that from the factory. So here's a look at the display here. Again, it's really classy. Looking in here, the seats are very comfortable. Having cooled seats running is awesome. I love that feature. Again, you can get that in the more expensive Teslas, but you do not get that in the three and the Y. Now, the acceleration in this thing, zero to 60 in six seconds. Uh, for a lot of people, they don't care. Six seconds um, isn't bad. So like if I rip it here, like, it still, it still pulls ahead, and then as you're going, if you just hit it, it goes. So it, it certainly has some pickup to it. The six second thing, yeah, is the Tesla faster? Yes, it is, but it's, it's not necessary. This has plenty of power, so I'm not gonna knock it for not being faster or as fast as the Tesla because it's just not necessary. But overall, the, uh, the sound in the cabin is, is excellent. It has the memory seats, the st three stage memory seats there. Everything's just put together very nicely. Like it's just, they know, they really know how to build a car. It's just gonna take them a while to get up to the same technology level that Tesla and even like Hyundai and some of those companies have the Koreans or, and Chinese are doing a really nice job with electric vehicles. Here's just a look at a quick acceleration here. So it gets up to speed plenty quick and probably faster, significantly faster than that of its gas powered counterpart, but it's quiet. It's just, it, you know, a lot of the bumps on the road, like those two that I just went over, the braces, for like knuckles and bridges for when it expands and contracts. In my Tesla, I like kind of brace for it because I have a 2020 model. And even despite having the comfort aftermarket suspension that I put on it, it's still rough. The newer Teslas, because of the dual plane glass and, and some sound deadening, and they changed the suspension uh, compression rates, they've done all of that, so they are quieter. So they've significantly improved in that department, but this is just a quieter, more comfortable vehicle. This also has 19 inch rims and thicker tires than the Model Y has. This has a lot going for it. It's, it's more comfortable in here, it's peaceful, but it's just gonna come down to what you want. Uh, you need to do your own research and pick the car that you want, not what your neighbor is telling you to get. Hey, if you like the Mercedes, get the Mercedes. If you like the Tesla or the VW or whatever, go get that. Now, if you wanna see a direct comparison of this Mercedes EQB compared to my Tesla Model Y long range, you can click this video right here. I think that will be very helpful.